Hello everybody, welcome to Jacko Car for the final night of F1 2019 action here. The main championship may have finished, but we are bringing you another five lap championship twice before it's been done on ILR and this is the first time it is being hosted here on Jacko Car. I am Luke Effridge and alongside me tonight bringing you what I'm sure will be nine races of non-stop action is... Austin Smith. Now, Austin, me and you have done 25% races together before, and they're always pretty mental. Just imagine what it's going to be like with nine five-lappers. Yeah, it's certainly going to be very, very frantic, very hectic, and uh, we have one driver who has a little bit more experience, especially of recently with, you know, the sort of longer kind of race. And by longer, I mean 24 hours, uh, as we do have Louis Delatraz in the... Uh, field who has won the 24-hour Le Mans race, the virtual one, just uh, last weekend. So that's going to be a difference for him. Imagine you, one week or one weekend, you're practicing and you're doing everything for a 24-hour race where your focus is consistency and just not making mistakes. And all of a sudden, you're going to enter a five-lap championship where all you do is really just flat out every single lap, every single corner, send it and hope for the best. Yeah, that's pretty much what everyone is going to be doing tonight. So the tracks that we're going over, you can see starting off in Abu Dhabi, Azerbaijan, Belgium. For the longest circuit of the night. Then two of the shortest on the F1 calendar. Austria and Monaco. Hockenheim ring, Hungara ring, Mexico. And ending at the Sochi Autodrome. The seven winners of the Jacko car season did pick seven of the tracks. And Jacko, the league owner, who is racing tonight, did pick Monaco and Russia. There are some prizes available for the winners of tonight. Whoever wins the five lap championship overall will get themselves a nice Jacko car t-shirt. And... There is a £10 PSN voucher prize for whoever has the best livery. So I'm sure all the drivers have been busy thinking about what colour scheme to go for. There are going to be quite a lot of tributes to old F1 liveries, as you guys are going to see shortly. Yeah, some of them have been tweeted out on the Jacko Car Twitter account, at Jacko Car underscore. Uh, if you want to take a look at them a little bit prematurely, you know, before you get to see them here on stream, you are free to do so. Also, make sure to follow at JackoCar underscore on Twitter. But yeah, we have uh, quite a, a, a prestigious field here. We have uh, the current JackoCar champion, Pete Knighton, who won the five lap championship in October 2018 as well. So he's looking to retain that crown. And uh, certainly he's one to look out for. I mean, he has experience with this sort of format. There's really not much of a predictor as to who's going to win this. Apart from maybe, you know, the guy who's done it before. Yeah, that is very true. You'd expect him to be looking good. Some of the others that I think might have half a chance tonight. Owen, who's usually commentating. He's, he's a pretty quick driver himself you've got to say Khalifa he had the most wins in the overall Jacko car championship missed out by less than half a second in the end of the championship race last Thursday but we'll be finding out shortly you guys so is your prediction then uh Pete is that who you're going for Austin yeah that's who I'm going for right I'm going for Khalifa you can uh, tweet us in about two hours time with how wrong we are because inevitably now that we've said that they're finishing nowhere inside the top 10 but anyway here we go first race Abu Dhabi, five laps, and a very, very technical circuit. Not the easiest to overtake on, so you don't really want to make any mistakes early on and drop behind cars. Yeah, exactly. You got to remember, DRS obviously is still a thing. However, in those five lap races, just like in any other race, DRS only gets activated at the end of lap two or the beginning of lap three. So the first two laps, which is 40% of the whole race, you don't get any DRS. You don't get any assistance on the long straight. So you're going to have to make overtakes happen all by yourself. Yeah, you are going to have to find your own way around. And I'm sure some of these drivers will be very skilled in doing that. So you mentioned, obviously, Pete and Khalifa, two guys we think are going to do well. Obviously, seeing as he's quite used to driving a lot of these circuits in real life, you can never count out. Louis Delatraz managed a few podiums in F2 last season some of these other drivers that have done well we've seen in other leagues before Riley can be a pretty quick driver Estimats 
And we have also got another fairly big name in the world of esports. We have got Ginger Andy. So we'll be able to see what he can do very shortly. The first five lap race is underway here in Abu Dhabi. It's a good start from Pete on the front row in that white and gold 21 car. Jacko trying to cut across as well to maybe get a chance, but down round the outside, Luke manages to hold on for now. So the top two already getting away a bit here. We've had some spinners in the background, I believe. Ooh. Might be Ginger, Ginger Andy, Andy. Dex, Baza, they've all come together in turn one. And we have more yellow flags there. That is, oh my goodness, that is hectic right there. Jeez, we have Mac, Risky, uh, Corey. They're all together there, all the way down to Arno in Arno, even Riley in P16. There was also someone getting a penalty for a collision with Riley. I couldn't see who that was. We have to quickly catch up on that. That was uh, MK Born, who got a two-second penalty. We got a three-second time penalty now for ignoring yellow flags, etc. That's also a thing we need to mention here, that obviously on a five lap race, the corner cut penalties are working differently. It's not this whole three warnings, and then you get a penalty. I think it's two warnings and you get a two second penalty, right? Yeah, a two second penalty definitely is because I see Jess getting one there. She's been involved in a few battles already on this first lap. Now she's been passed by MK Bourne. That is not an optimal line through there. Khalif has got front wing damage. So the commentator's curse has worked after a couple of miles already of this Yas Marina circuit. On board now with Owen. He's been battling with Razor in the first few corners of this circuit. We're nearly towards the end of lap one. But yellow flags once again. And I'm not quite sure who that is. I think it's... Camarabo just spinning around there in that lovely uh, lilac livery there. I'll make a note of that one for later on. But anyway, up ahead, it's still Luke in the leader's race. Pete in second. Louis is now in third, sort of on his own. We've got more yellow flags, and that is Ginger Andy out of the race. So he joined Jack O'Carr to commentate last time around. He might be wishing now he'd stuck to the commentary role because it hasn't been an ideal start, but he's still got eight races to go to try and make something of this. As, oh, as Jack there's pretty much just made his own line up through the chicane. Yeah, uh, sometimes that happens in such a short and frantic race, but uh, you just got to keep on keeping on. And uh, Jack and MP4, he's, I think at this point he's probably a little bit too far away in his Renault R25, R26-inspired livery here in the blue and yellow. And Y Racer tried to send one up the inside. There goes Owen making up his own line through that chicane right there. And uh, I'm not sure that's all too legal. He has to give back the position there and loses another one to Isti Mats, who goes round the outside, makes it three wide. And I can't see it. There they go. Uh, the camera didn't really help me there. And Owen makes up his line again. I, I don't know what he's doing there. Owen is just fr free flowing, really. Yeah, he has got quite a lot of front wing damage there, Austin. So that pretty much explains why he's struggling here. As that was a that was a risk by Risky to go down the inside there. Now SD Max is off the circuit. Yeah, talking of Jacko's livery, I did tell him, and everyone, the viewers are going to get an insight here. I did have my bedroom painted oh, in that red Owen's colours. out. Owen's, Owen's out. in the wall. Owen's in the wall. That is the exit of turn 19. That is the the third last corner there. And he just went straight on. Yes, yeah, straight on in the wall. So he will be getting no points from this first race. It is the same scoring system as used in actual Formula 1. Here comes Della Trazzo. He's closing in on Peter Luke in the lead of this race. You can see there the order of the positions and what positions have been gained. Risky's gone up 15 places, really, living up to his name with some of his overtakes to do that on the first lap. But here we go. First time we've got DRS. Louis just... Losing out a bit there, Delatraz on Pete up ahead. And Luke, he'll be looking pretty comfortable into this first again. You can see now Risky right behind his speed teammate. And that is going to be a fairly straightforward pass. No defence from y Racer, And there we go, Risky now up into fourth position. Heading for the lead though, still Pete a bit too far behind this time around. Luke doing well, not even bothering to use any ERS. You can see, actually, Speed is losing quite a bit there on the straight. So, pulling away from Lowe, but not able to make any moves on Luke out ahead. And these guys with a six-second lead already on those ahead. So, barring any incidents, this will be the top three. But it's anyone's guess whose order it's going to be in. Yeah, and barring any incidents is uh, a great assumption here. Because we see how many incidents we already had uh, there's there's no guarantee that we don't get any more right now the top three 
seem uh, very well behaved. I mean, otherwise they wouldn't be that high in the order. But uh, for how long? I mean, it's two more laps to go here. And uh, obviously, with only nine races, a win is all that more important. Because seven points over your normal average 21, la uh, 21 race championship, you know, seven points isn't much. Over nine races, yeah, seven points can be the difference maker. Yeah, definitely. Uh, there got Mac going round the outside of Arno, battling hard with him throughout the entire final sector. He's up into ninth place for now, and I think he's another car that's got a bit of damage on the front wing end plate. There's going to be plenty of carbon fibre tonight flying all over the place. I can assure you of that. Seventh and eighth place. We've got the league owner versus a driver who's trying to get into the league next time around. So maybe you don't want to annoy him too much here, Riley, and make sure you've got a nice clean pass there. And he does that before we head to the chicane at the end of the first DRS zone. And Estimax has got ahead of Y Racer as well. More yellow flags. I think that... I'm not sure who that was. We've got O'Keek travelling very slowly. So I'm guessing he is going to be the cause of those yellow flags this time around. Out in front though, Luke still in the lead. Looking fairly comfortable now with Louis dropping back. But we've still got Y Racer and Estimax. They are battling incredibly hard for this fifth position and if they carry on wouldn't be surprising to see Riley and possibly Jacko catch up to them as well make it a four-way fight for the fifth position yeah that could very well happen I mean they're they're really really quick and they, there's always something to be said about the sort of racer focus is what I like to call it that the moment you see the cars up front it just gives you a couple tents and that might be the difference maker here that maybe Riley and uh, even Jacko can catch up. And you see Riley is already close to the back of Matt's on the final lap here. So this could actually change quite drastically. Up front, Louis Deltras losing a bit of touch with the top two. And it might be that Knighton is going to be the only one to mount a challenge against Luke. We got the DRS trade coming right here. And he's using as much of his DRS as he can. Overtake mode engaged for both of them. Delatraz not so much. He, I think he knows he's beaten. He just wants to bring that third place home. But Knighton too far away here into the first chicane. But look at how clo how much closer he gets there on the break. And now, now's the fight. This is the, your best opportunity if you're Knighton. Luke covering the inside. I think that's a smart call right here. Knighton has to go the long way around. Does he send it? It, it turns to the inside here. But ooh, Luke gives him no space. And Knighton says, all right, if you push me off, then I'll take the shortcut and take the position. Not sure how legal that is. Knight has to give the position back from the game. So Luke back up into the lead. And a full send by Knight. Gets a two-second penalty and runs into Luke. And now the cutback. And Knight is back on top. But I don't think Luke has a penalty. Yeah, if Luke's kept it clean, he's going to take the win here. Although they, they could still crash together. Because that was a very brave send from Pete Knight. And we've seen that a lot in the Jackal car season so far from him it is allowed here so there we go he's first across the line but Luke takes the victory Louis Delatraz gets a third place first Jack O'Carr race he's actually got to the end of Risky in fourth position sort of in a race of his own Riley drifting his way to get six there just behind SD Max and just ahead of Speedy Racer Jacko will be eight on old on his own in ninth position Indecisive Mac will be the tenth car across the line they will be your top ten we've still got a few battles going on here though further down the field Jess just holding on to 12th place at the moment. Oh, CX Ray's going to send Corey. it down the inside. Uh, they touch. And Jess has the better acceleration out of the corner. And she will have 12th place on track. But Corey, with the fastest lap of the race right at the end there, gets 12th on penalties. And then it's Khalifa 14th, MK Bourne 15th. Oh, never mind. Okiki 15th, MK Bourne 16th, Dex Dex 17th. And I couldn't see who was 18th. Yeah, the big news though, Luke managing to keep it up from pole position, taking the win despite some of Pete's moves there to try and get past him. So he'll be delighted with that. I swear we had a Leonardo DiCaprio lookalike on the podium there, but I think it's just my eyes deceiving it a bit. <laughs> uh, Paul, with, Paul in the chat with his own comments on some of Jess's uh, battles there with Corey. But there we go. We can see there Luke taking the victory. Pete and Louis both having a penalty, but Risky gaining 16 places already. He was sending it in them first few laps and managed to get through fairly cleanly as well because he kept it pointing in the right direction, whereas some of the others, not so much. 
Yeah, he stayed true to his name, really. Uh, I mean, if you're called Risky, you have to. You really have to be in this format as well. I mean, especially if you're starting a P20 and you, you, you think you have some sort of speed you want to make it through, then, you know, if you're doing it risky, Riley as well did a very good job there from P17 to P6. So those two, the biggest gainers. But, uh, yeah, Luke, what, what can we say? I mean, it was a great fight there in the end, but um, from pole position, and he just did a really good job of keeping that first place, and we move on to the next track, which which is it? Azerbaijan, I think. Oh, which... Castle section. The, the castle That's all I'm going to say. Yeah. <laughs> so someone is getting stuck. That is all I am saying. Yeah. I remember what. Do, do we have? Do we have Charles Leclerc's "I Am Stupid" as a as a as a uh, sound bite ready to play in I mean, case that happens? I, hope I can try an impression, but I feel like I'll, I'll always <laughs> apologise to anyone who's Monegasque who might be watching. Yeah, well, most likely. <laughs> You can see the uh, order there, obviously, Lou, yeah. with the win in that race. He'll be pretty happy with that. Pete living up to his form that he's shown, reigning Jacko Car champion. Louis Delatour, as we always expected, good things from him. Jacko dropped a few races. Matt, he'll be happy to get a point there. Going further down, Khalifa, I definitely gave him the curse there. Dexter, he'll be disappointed with that performance. Baza in the Braun, that's not the start you'd expect from a Braun. They usually lightning at the start and then drop off towards the end. And Owen... And Andy, the commentators, really not enjoying driving at the moment. Yeah, it's, uh, I have to say, considering the pace of all the commentators in this race, uh, you know, where they usually end up, it's, uh, it's surprising, but also not surprising, that Jess is the one faring the best, because Owen and Ginger Andy both binned it. Yeah, no, no disrespect to Jessie. She can hold her own no. at times, but she's not yeah. the quickest driver, and she would admit that herself. But she's managed to keep it clean so far, and she did that to get a few decent finishes last time around. It's beautiful weather here in Azerbaijan, and I'll be glad for that after the actual Jacko car race, where there was tire <laughs> strategy chaos all the time. Trying to keep it on track is hard enough around here in the dry. I've got to say, on career mode, the amount of flashbacks I used on here, I'm not sure you can count how many it was. Yeah, a lot of people don't like the rain. I, I know from all my commentaries I've done with Owen that he really absolutely hates the rain when he gets to commentate. I'm completely the opposite. I like rain. I, I wouldn't mind it, you know, being the commentator. Obviously, if I was driving, uh, no, absolutely not. But, you know, as a commentator, why not? Yeah, why not? So it's staying nice and dry here. Here we go. Round two on the way of this fight car championship. This time it's MK Born away from pole position. Riley trying to get a good start. Owen straight away thinking about a move. But we've got Kamobo there trying to go all the way around the outside at turn one. And he has managed it just about. But you can see Owen's going to try and chuck it down the inside. He's managed that but not got ahead of Riley. So MK Born still getting Ooh, away so Khalifa's round again. Yep. He is really not enjoying this. I think he's but, only got Luke, minor what, damage. Yeah, uh, right side end plate uh, gone. Apart from that, everything seems fine. Luke, what have you done to him? I don't know. Well, he did a better job than Raganathan did at turning it with this car around at Azerbaijan, I must say. But the less said about that, the better. Come on. Cover Barbo there trying to get past Owen, not managing to do so for now. We're coming up to the castle section. It's chaos enough in a normal race, but when they've only got five laps to make the most of things, there's Aegle Pete again, sending it down the inside. We'll check on board with him to make sure that everyone gets through smoothly. He does. I'm going to be honest, the castle section is not really the part of the track I have trouble with on here. It's pretty Ooh. much every other part. Yeah, Risky, however, did hit the wall there. Thankfully, he could go on, but I was switching through everyone to see how they take the castle section. The only one who had any sort of issue was Risky, who uh, hit the wall on the right side. The maybe oh, there you go, Risky he's out. Hit the wall now. He is, yeah, he's giving it a proper that, whack. That on is his second that attempt. is the that is the Grosjean spot. That is the Ericsson hit us spot right there. Maybe Ericsson did hit him. Who knows? Uh, Jess. Yeah, just lost most likely. A lot of her front wing just about manages to avoid Risky's car. So here we go. The slipstreaming begins with Riley right behind MK Bourne. And kind of ironically, he's going to slingshot past the race leader here to take the lead this time around. This great straight line face, I must say, from MK Bourne. No DRS, obviously. And here Ooh, we go. They both go to Owen can take advantage Ooh, of that. And spin! He can. And MK Bourne's out! They both went too deep. MK Bourne did not leave Riley any space on the outside. 
And ultimately, one spun around the other, MK born into the wall, tire off, race over. Yeah, race over for MK Bourne. He'll be quite underprepared there. We've lost a Dexter SD mats as well. So Azerbaijan living up to its name of being one of the toughest circuits in Formula One. You can see there for retirement. I think that can only maybe revival by Monaco at the end of tonight. Jess, Ginger Andy and Y Razor in the pit, so they're not having the ideal night, but Pete looking pretty good for another second position as things stand. We had yellow flags again, and that is Corby this time out of the race so another one down here Khalifa might still pick up some points here he's got himself up to 12 plays and that's the thing he didn't get too much damage and you've just got to carry on especially around a circuit like this because you never know what could happen yeah and Corey uh, his car is still rolling so I don't know why exactly he retired there it must have been a manual retirement it wasn't from you know the wheel coming off or anything or the, sorry the tire coming off so oh Louis Deltress is out that is the same spot. That is the Eric's uh, and, Grosjean and, spot again. And Mac as well. He's he's lost it. Has he lost it at the exact same point? I, I think, think so, yeah. Yeah, we're going to stay on board with um, White Razor just for a bit to see if we can see these two retiring cars. But yeah, it is at the oh Ericsson hitters bit. So those are out of the race. Could pretty much be anyone who finishes here. He's going to get some points. As Here we go. Owen's got the fastest lap of the race out in front. Oh no, trying to go all the way around the outside. Now Jacko is out they're pushing incredibly hard around here Kamabobo managing to hang on with this all the battling seems to be happening in midfield here as there we go is Arnold going to be able to make it down the inside they've got DRS Kamabobo's lost his end plate and he's going to find himself a sitting duck here from Arnold and also Luke as well Arnold goes through on the outside before we get to turn three can Luke follow he's got an Arnold right in front of him in that orange yellow and red Jacko car liveried car off his but now Luke he's got all of well he's missed a part of his front wing actually I think will be anyone who has all uh, carbon fibre parts on their car should get a bonus point at the end of this race because it's been absolutely <laughs> manic so far but there we go Luke has just about managed to get ahead for now and we are down to just 12 runners here Riley still going around after that incident but he's got a lot of damage on his car as Ginger Andy he tries to go around and Pete is now out and that that is, is Exit of uh, like, exit of the castle section. That is, uh, hold on, which corner is that again? I'm, I'm really bad with the corner numbers. Turn eleven. That's, that is really unusual. Yeah, that's the same place Lewis Hamilton crashed in the first race here in qualifying. But that was he just turned in too much on the inside and broke yeah. his front right wheel. That's the opposite one from Pete there. So he's out. Ginger Andy still ahead of Y Racer. So these are now in ninth and tenth from Riley with. Not too much damage. I think he's been into the pits to change his front wing and he nearly ended up with a lot more damage. And he, never mind a front wing change, I think an underpants change might be needed after that skid coming into the castle section there. So obviously with all these incidents, we ended up with a very spaced out field now. But Owen started lap four. He's not got too much to worry about as long as he can keep it out of the barriers. Here comes Okiki. Okiki up on Camel Bubble. Oh, and Camel Bubble goes into the pits. That was really late. Uh, Okiki just. I mean, it looked like a little bit of a dummy there, but at the same time, Camel Bubble coming into the pits at the last possible moment to get a new front wing. And uh, yeah, uh, is Okiki up to P4, Khalifa 5, Baza now 6, Ginger Andy coming across the line rather shortly Kamababa back out of the pit lane I think he will retain P7 question is by how much here he comes out of the pit lane Ginger Andy sees him but Kamababa just ahead by about a second yeah yep 1.2 yeah just over a second so Ginger Andy isn't going to have DRS to defend although looking at this why is it is just a bit too far behind to really have a realistic go Riley's coming to the pits as well didn't see any damage on his car but he's going to come out just ahead well just behind Jess actually as I think now uh, there we go Speedy did just about avoid hitting the wall and Khalifa with that damaged front wing he's showing some pretty decent pace at the moment you'd expect that of the man who won more jack of car races than anyone in the first season he's up into fifth position maybe that lack of uh, drag that he's getting could help him down the straights here because he's going to have a fantastic chance to get past Okiki and take fourth position here. No one anywhere near behind as there Okiki's gone very deep into the final real corner on this circuit. Yeah. It's just flat out now all the way and I can't see that green car up ahead having any defence. Yeah, Okiki also has a little bit of front wing damage as one of the end plates missing and that's Ginger Andy out. 
Where's that happen? Is that castle section as well? No. No, that is. It's oh, it's a really awkward. I know uh, which corner it is. The... It's turn turn fifteen, where you see quite a few cars hop over the curb and lose it. Yeah. yeah. While all that was happening, Khalifa did get ahead, so he's now up into oh, fourth position. I, yeah, I, I was just on board with Riley, and I, what I saw was that apparently the incident happened in turn fourteen, and then his car just went on a little bit further. So again, maybe another manual retirement, which. Doesn't really make sense because Ginger Andy was in a points paying position, so I, I don't understand why you would end the race that Owen me while going through the castle section for the final time and you know slightly overcooking it, but uh, ultimately stayed out of the wall. Arno making it through there as well, Luke. Khalifa would be the next one to come up there with Okiki behind him. The gap is just under a second now. It's over a second now, never mind. And Okiki slightly overcooking it. But uh, yeah, Owen now through the final real corner, and unless disaster strikes, this should be Owen's for the taking. Yeah, Owen is showing that even when he's not commentating and he's in the driver's seat, he's still pretty good at what he does. He's going to take the victory here in the second race of nine here in the Jacko Car 5 lap championship. So here it is, Owen crosses the line, he takes the victory. Arnold will come home in second position. And it'll be Luke. Two podiums out of two races. That's a pretty good way of starting your championship in that Williams tribute car. We have got a battle happening though. Speedy Racer and Bazda. Well, that's the end of that battle. The Speedy Racer completely drifts out of turn 15 there. So, what, Khalifa's come home for? I'm not Kiki. sure. I'm not sure. Speed, it's a long straight here. And Speedy Racer will get the DRS in. Bazda has damage, so... Speedy Racer goes past, and it's Baza who gets the DRS though. Is it enough to get back past Racer? No, it isn't. Oof, just over a tenth there, but Speedy Racer does actually get seventh place. Baza and P8, and then we're going to have Riley and P9, and Jess scoring her first point in the second race. Yeah, I think many drivers here in Azerbaijan have learned that famous phrase, to finish first, first you must finish. Only five laps, but half the field ending up retiring. Even the reigning Jacko Car champion and reigning five lap champion, and even a professional F2 racing driver finding it difficult around here. One man who did it though, it is Owen. He might not enjoy it when he rains. He finds it pretty good when it is in dry conditions. He'll be delighted with that, but Luke... It's really important to be consistent in something like this. And he's got two podiums in the first two races, so he's in a pretty good spot. Yeah, 40 points after two races is a pretty good tally to start off on. And with only seven races left, I mean, you know, it really is a good start. And a good foundation to be laid with uh, the final seven races still coming up. Yeah, you can see there the top 10 from the race. So if we now look at what the standings are, no, it's very early stages. Luke, unsurprisingly, he's already got a 14-point lead. Arnaud looking pretty good after two-point scoring performances. Khalifa getting back up in there. Still a lot to play for, and there's still a few drivers there. Four now, Ginger Andy, Corey, MK Bourne, and Dexter. They'll be hoping that the next race, they'll be able to get off the foot of the table and it's pretty much I think a complete opposite circuit next to Azerbaijan we've got Belgium well it's opposite in one regard as in uh, there's not really any or not that many twisty little sections but at the same time it's also a high speed track and it's also a very long track uh, the Baku city circuit being 6 kilometers long and I think the second longest track on the calendar, only beaten by the track we go to next, spa franc Rochon, where we have seven kilometers. So just six, pretty much exactly one kilometer and one meter more. Yeah, it's pretty long, I think it's fair to say, Belgium. So you can yeah. say it's going to be the longest race of the evening. Luke, he'll be hoping for another podium. Owen, we, we said that, he's, he's a very quick guy for a as commentators are generally known to not be as good as the driving as the commentating, he's the exception to the rule. Yeah, uh, he really is. I mean, if you look through 
uh, leaderboards, global leaderboards and so on, you always see Owen in the top 500 in the world, which for a commentator, very unusual. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm talking from experience here. Uh, you will never find me in those regions. Usually I'm, I'm happy if I make it into the top 15,000, which is where the cutoff is. Beyond that, you're not even listed. Um, so <laughs> That's why I'm 15,000 and first at every circuit. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Um, but uh, yeah, Owen certainly has some pace. And I'm, I'm, I, I got to say, you know, speaking from a commentator's perspective myself, I'm a little surprised that Owen doesn't try to go the, the analyst way, the analyst route, where he's like, I know everything about this game, which he undoubtedly does. And, and just, you know, tries to be the analyst instead of the play-by-play -play commentator. But, you know, that's just a little bit of uh, commentator's intricacies uh, that I'm talking about here. And, you know, he, but he has he has a lot of pace and he is one of the contenders, I think, for the Five Lab Championship. Yeah, definitely now he's in second position, but still a long way to go. Only two races gone, another seven, starting off with this one here at Belgium. Be interested to see what order we've got on the grid here as well because those that have been near the front have done pretty well this time around will it be the same here in belgium as the lights are on out they go in the tyson mac with the lead this time straight away covering from o'keek and that's just going to leave a nice little line for jacko to sweep down the inside of o'keeky who's losing quite a few places here pete he's starting high up there's a bit of carbon fiber flying Okiki and Risky coming together. We almost had Spa 98 reimagined in 2020. And there's one off. That's a Ginger Andy into the wall. He's out on the top at Radion. And Khalifa also. Speed Racer into the wall. We have three drivers claimed by Rouge and Radion on the first lap. Lou Delatraz from P17 on the grid now making his first move on track on Jess. And look at Louis Delatraz's view his point of view is insane look at all the cars in front of him it's absolute nightmare it's like it's like looking at the what's the what's what's the motorway in the uk where you have lots of traffic jams all of them m25 oh. <laughs> it's the one that, yeah it's looking at the m25 thankfully the m25 yeah. has less crashes than that because corby he's having a few issues we saw Baza spinning around but all of this has happened okiki's out as well he has gone off at puhan so we've already lost a few drivers. And, oh, Indecisive Matt leading the race. He's lost it on his own. He's completely lost it on his own coming out of that uh, chicane. Not just him. Issy Matt is out as well in the campus section there. Our nose spun around. So those two may have come together. And Risky now taking the lead. Where Indecisive Mac dropping from first to last. Our no out. And Indecisive Mac is still around. So has to... I mean, that's Ragunathan right there. I mean... Yeah, that's very ragunathan esque He's not had the best of times with that. Well, all that's been happening, Louis Delatraz has a bit less, more M25, more of a nice little country road drive going on here, where he's just trying to get past a faster car, a slower car, sorry, ahead of him. So you can see there, Owen's diving into the pits. He actually had a penalty for overtaking under yellow flags. Pete, he's now out again, so he's really finding it tough in the last couple of races. But this is what we expected to see from some of these quicker guys finding their way up through the field Riley having a better race than last time in third he's gone up 12 positions oh! that's but definitely remember, a commentator's there's... curse yeah it's certainly I mean that's that's uh, that's a textbook one right there Riley out um, and one thing I think we have to mention is that there is no ghosting ghosting has been turned off so all the drivers know if they do see a car in front, they have to make sure they drive around it. They can't drive through it because ghosting has been a little bit unreliable on this game. And so the decision was made, you know what, we're going to turn that off. And you have to actually drive around the wreckage. Yeah, let's hope everyone remembers to do that. We saw Jess nearly get caught out in Azerbaijan, nearly going straight into the back of one of the many drivers who crashed at the Grosjean section. But thankfully, she avoided that and she's still going on in this race as up in the front of this race we've just had a change for the lead Camarabo getting past Risky so that is a swap for first and second and that must have happened at that campus section not normally a place yeah. you see an overtake but maybe if you've got a big damage on your front wing as Risky has because now Louis Delatraz is following through as well and Dexter's going to fancy his chances coming into the bus stop 
Yeah, all I can tell Risky right now, if he's listening, stay out. Don't go into the pits. You're losing way too much time in a five-lap race from going into the pits. Just stay out, and he won't. Oh, oh well. He's Well, you never know. By the way, this is going. There could be quite a few more accidents. He might be able to pick himself up a fastest lap as well. So Camabarbo leading this race. Got Louis Delatraz all over the the back of him shortly I'd imagine DRS will be enabled this time around and the man who's looking to take advantage will be Luke 1980s Lotus versus 2000 Williams here as they come through Orouge and Radion that is textbook from Luke he's got it just right didn't catch Dexter up too early now we can open the rear wing and this should be a straightforward overtake for Luke up into third place as long as he keeps it clean, he's looking good for a third podium here. And Risky didn't even lose that much time there. He's still come out in sixth position. Yeah, but five seconds behind Owen. If he stays out, he remains at least in, in fifth ahead of Owen. So at least it's that one position, those two points that uh, he has lost from that pit stop. That's why I was saying that. I don't think Owen's going to make another mistake. I think he went into the pits for a front wing change on lap one because he got caught up in some sort of accident with another car. And uh, yeah, that, that's why he finds himself now 18 and a half seconds down on Dex Dexter in fourth place, who is putting pressure on Luke. He's not giving that up just yet. Louis Delatras, meanwhile, trying to get into the one second window of Camo Barbo there. He's just a bit too far away, but uh, it could still happen. There's still two laps left to do it, and a lap ago, the gap was 1.5 seconds, so he has gained almost half a second on this lap. If he does that twice more, well, he's, he's going to look very punchy towards the end. Yeah, we maybe, could maybe see a last lap battle between them. Maybe a last lap lunge into the bus stop chicane and there we go, Louis fastest man at the moment, 146.831 and you can see the reason why these four are so far ahead of everyone is they've not had to make a pit stop as Dexter bit impatient there on the brake, straight into the back of Luke, saw a bit of carbon fibre fly and that is a missing end play and I think that's the chances of him getting on the podium barring any mistakes from those ahead out of the window, Owen's showing fantastic pace again so Dexter he'll definitely stay out with such a short time remaining and Louis he did get within that all important one second but you can see there he had two percent on his ERS at the end of that straight he's going to spend the rest of this lap saving as much as possible surely to have a go no. down the camel straight <laughs> next time round he's, he's still on overtake mode I don't know if his button failed to to turn it down or something or if he just doesn't care but he's he's not saving anything he's stuck on overtake mode and of course, that doesn't really help him much, but it might still be enough, considering how long the Camel Straight is. Surely, that should still be enough, even with no ERS deployment, as he goes deep there. Almost hits the back of Camel Babo, thankfully able to avoid. And uh, yeah, I think he's going to try it on the Camel He's not going to try it here through uh, Blanchiment and then into the bus stop chicane. But yeah, he's really not saving any here as he does. He just floors it. Yeah, Camel Barbo's only on normal mode as well. So he's not really losing out here by having such a low battery charge at the moment. So can, will we go for it in the bus stop? Surely the intelligent thing to do is to wait until the Camel straight is now. Mac, he's out. So that's another retirement so Jess in 11th and last only one more retirement you could find a way getting into the points once more final lap of the race here round three of nine in the Jack of Car five lap championship and this time we really do not have a clue a bit like the first yeah. race who is going to take the victory is it going to be Cabo yeah. Barbo is it going to be Louis meanwhile Louis has found the dear uh, the ERS uh, turn down button because he's turned it down to one a little bit too late I think but uh, maybe he did it just so he gets a better run. But look at how far Camo Babo is away now. Uh, Louis doesn't catch up. Louis doesn't get there. He's too far away. I never thought I'd be hit sitting here telling a real-life F2 driver how to drive a racing car. But there we are. <laughs> you should have turned the ERS down, my friend. You should have done that. Maybe you'd have had a chance there. But if he keeps it low for the rest of the lap, he could be looking pretty good to have a go into the bus stop yeah. at the end. Maybe that's his goal. Maybe that's his thinking that he just doesn't want to be vulnerable into the the bus stop chicane and rather be the one attacking. The, the later you overtake, the higher your chance of actually winning. So maybe it's actually a smart call here from the Swiss driver. 
on Kama Babo, but he has to use mo he's using it now. Hot lap mode engaged. Might be a bit early, but we'll see. He will get slipstream. Definitely caught up, but you can see he's looking really good. And Carabarbo not having seen turns the it down again. One, but are we going to see a last corner lunge? Surely you're not going to get this close to the back of someone without giving it a go into the bus stops again. Uh, so here we go. Carabarbo is just pulling away now, and Louis all the way around the outside. He's going to try it, but Carabarbo's got enough to hold him off. So Carabarbo makes it three different winners from three races here in this championship and Luke once again at his three podiums out of three he's really loving it at the moment yeah uh, that just uh, cements his position at the top of the standings Dexter in fourth Owen after the front wing change I think he will also have the fastest lap so at least that's 11 points for him MK Bourne now through the final corner that will be P6 for him and then we still got and no, we don't really have a fight on for P7 with uh, Risky. Then Jacko in 8th, Baza in ninth, Corey will get the final point, and Jess, the only finisher to uh, not get rewarded with a single point this race. Yeah, Jacko had an unserved penalty there, so he's knocked down to ninth position. But Corey, yeah, taking 10th with that Jaguar tribute, and Jess, almost 2020 20 racing point esque with those colors so almost 2019 mercedes-esque with the car comes through in <laughs> 11th position but the winner that time was Barbo and louis delatraz all over the back of him and that's definitely pressure having a professional behind you so you will have a look through the chat standings then from round three of nine we're already a third of the way through time flies when you're having fun here, then you can see the order. Only four drivers not pitting. Unsurprisingly, they were the top four. Camababo, Delatraz, Luke, and Dexter missing out on the podium. Only just there. Owen doing well to come from last place and a pit stop to finish in fifth position. So what that does for the standings after round three, he's still in second place. 18 points behind Luke at the moment, but Camababo and Delatraz, the big winners from that, they're now up to 33 points, the pair of them. Yeah, that's a big jump. I mean, if you look at the top five, they've all started in the back half of the field and they've all moved up into the top five positions. All of them have gained at least 10 positions. Dex Dexter, 10. Kamababo, 12. Louis Delatraz, 15. Luke, 16. And Owen, 15. That, that's remarkable. Yeah, that is a fantastic performance from those guys in that race. Coming up next is round four which i believe is the red bull thing so yes. that is pretty much going to be drs central after lap three <laughs> yeah exactly uh we, we talk a lot on uh on different leagues about the the drs trains that form on certain tracks on this game and i, I think apart from maybe bahrain nowhere is that truer than at the red bull ring where you have three consecutive straights with drs and it's just, yeah, as you said, DRS Central right there. And uh, if you're the third car or fourth car in the train, yeah, I mean, good luck. You're, you're not going to make an overtake. If you're the second car, that's where you want to be because that allows you then to make an overtake on the first car that doesn't have DRS. Yeah, so there you can see the races we've got left tonight. Austria, Monaco, Germany, Hungary, Mexico, and ending in Russia. We've had... Luke took three podiums out of three races so far. Managed to keep it trouble free. Do you feel at some point that one's got to come to an end? <laughs> I mean, we'll see. We'll see. For Austria, man, certainly a, 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 a track that looks very easy. I mean, it only has... I mean, the official notation is that it has ten corners. But if we exclude turn two, which we should, uh, it's it's more uh, it's more nine corners. I mean, you could maybe even exclude turn eight because that's not really a proper corner. Turn five as well. I mean, you really only have about six corners around here. Yeah. And we also have overcast conditions. Oh, what a shame it would be if it started absolutely throwing it down with rain. We've one or two laps to go. That'd be absolutely yeah, that would tragic be... for all these yeah, guys. Yeah, totally. I mean, that would be just so awful. 
<laughs> I'd love that. I'm not doing a rain dance at all here. I'm so glad there's no webcam on because everyone would have just turned off now. Anyway, here we go. I think it's Dexter there in that black and gold Lotus who's on pole position. And there we go. He's got Riley alongside him. Riley getting a very good start, but he's not going to be able to have a go. Surely into turn one. There's not too much of a breaking zone there. So you can see all running off the circuit. Dexter a bit too much there, and that's going to give Riley a fantastic chance. Turn two, as we said, is flat out. He's going to be on the inside for turn three. And if these push each other wide, Risky might be able to get himself involved in it as well. And there we go. It's happened. Riley down the inside of Dexter, nearly taking the pair of them out. And Risky in the end got slowed up a bit there. Okiki trying to take advantage of that behind. We've got yellow flags. Not quite sure who's that dropping down the field. It might have been Khalifa once again. Riley down the inside. Risky trying to make a way through as well. And he spun around. Yeah, uh, that is one of the cause that there's more happening, more carnage, and some of the drivers trying to find their way through. Knighton and Louis Delatraz doing so, uh, with Ginger Andy as well coming out, the, out of there. Khalifa as well. It's, it's Baza, Arno, AC Mats, and Risky who have been involved in this, I think. And Baza now holding up Arno a little bit here through turn seven and eight. And let's see how many drivers go into the pits as Ginger Andy goes round the outside of Owen, who has to pit once again for damage. Yeah, things not going well here for Owen today. I'm just on board with, well, I was on board with Lou for a bit in 14th position at the moment. That's the thing. Sometimes if you just run out of a bit of luck, that could be it. But he's right in the slipstream of Ginger Andy this time around. The Veloci commentator was involved in some of the, not the GP events. This time, found it very hard to keep that BMW Williams behind. And you can see Luke does have a bit of damage. Jacko, he's gone way wide through there. Sometimes you can gain a bit of time. Not, I think, if you're pushed wide like the league owner was. He drops down now into Ooh. 14th. Yeah, meanwhile, Indecisive Mac relived the Zonta moment as he had Luke on the left side, Dalitraz on the right side, just overtaking him on the same straight at the same time. Yeah, you can see now Ginger Andy, he's sort of standing himself in the middle of all this. I think Delatraz has got into the back of Pete there. He's going to lose all the momentum and could Indecisive Mac have a go into turn 9 and 10. They're not really passing places, but they are with the car in front. You've got such a good run on there. As you can see there, Pete deciding to dive into the pits. That nearly caught Ginger Andy around. They won't have DRS on this straight at the moment, but they will on the next straight, heading down towards turn 3. So Ginger Andy's hold on that final point place might not last too long big speedy racer he's gone round i think he nearly ended up facing the wrong way into the pit lanes took a polystyrene board out he now drops down into 15 so the speed team really struggling at the moment in this race one's lost 11 places one's lost four and one is in the pits he's actually gained the place so far but he's still finding himself down in 17 riley though you'll be wanting to get at least a second ahead of Dexter because with them three DRS straights that nine tenths of a second won't last too long even with only two laps to go yeah right now he's trying to make a run for it although it doesn't seem too hopeful the DRS uh, detection point right here is uh, at the end of turn nine on the exit of turn nine so before the pit entry even is, is where the detection point is and uh, definitely Dexter was close enough and he was close enough again on the end of the pit straight so he definitely gets the DRS but he doesn't get the corner exits right so he doesn't even gain that much because Riley is doing a fantastic job of accelerating out of the corner as early as possible straightening the car up and just flooring it and so Dexter doesn't even gain much yeah Riley's having to adapt because he is missing an end no, he's not missing an end plate there. I completely made that up. So apologies for that. I thought he saw him we were missing end plate. So that is why he's doing such an incredible job. It's because he's got everything on that car that he needs to. And Dexter knows he can't afford to go for a lunge too much with Okiki just behind him at the moment. So Dexter just missed a podium last time around. It looks as though he's just going to miss a win this time around. Indecisive Mac battling with Louis Delatraz for the final points position at the moment. Mac going a bit wide there, coming through turn six and if there's a mistake from these you've got Baza, Risky, oh no not too far behind either Owen after having to make that pit stop he is leading out of those that has pitted but unfortunately it's been a bit of a cleaner race for him and he's down in 15th is there, you go Risky comes, getting a much better exit from Here comes Okiki 
Here comes Okiki on Dexter for P2. Gets it done before the breaking zone because Dexter went way too deep into turn one. Did not get a good exit. And Okiki prioritized getting a good exit. Braked a bit earlier to straighten up the car quickly and gets the run. But he's now under pressure from Dexter. Meanwhile, Riley is driving away with this. Dexter sending it to the inside of Okiki. They're side by side coming out of the corner. Okiki will have the inside, but also the slightly longer run here. Now the inside for turn six. Oh, they brush. It wasn't really much of a touch. It was more of a brush, really. But they both keep going, and Dexter gets the overtake done round the outside of Okiki. Yeah, fantastic driving from them. I don't think Okiki's quite given up on this. Yeah, but he's going to have to be a mighty overtake into the final corner, and that is not on, so it's Riley making it four winners out of four. Dexter coming home in second. Oh, Dexter's taking it on penalties. Yeah. That was a very crucial overtake then at the end. Okiki second, Riley missing out by less than... It's just, it's just over... No, it's less than three tenths it's of a second yeah. from a victory. It's less than three tenths away from a victory. We have the top three within three tenths of each other after penalties. Corey fourth, MK born fifth, Camel Baba six, Luke seven, Jess scoring another four points, making it five now. Ginger and the MP9 getting two points for him and Indecisive Mag, the last one in the points. Then we have Risky. Louis Delatres outside the points. Baza, Arno, Owen only down in P15. Knighton in 16th. The reigning champion, Khalifa in 17th. Your pick. What do you have to say about that, Luke? <laughs> and we all make mistakes. And <laughs> and and it seems my mistake was just picking anyone, I think, because we mentioned in, yeah, in, probably, in Belgium, but... as soon as I said, oh, Riley's doing okay, he soon yeah. wasn't <laughs> doing okay. And then, I've just said he's his, and then I've said he's taken his first win, and yeah, penalties have yeah, done him there, but well, he'll still be happy with getting a podium. Yeah, but look, look at who's 20th, none other than Jacko. Really but, not doing the old Renault R26 proud at all. Yeah, he won't be sending himself a t-shirt, it looks like, if he carries on performing <laughs> like this. But he could still maybe get that £10 PSN voucher for the best vouch for the best livery. You'll find out at the end. So Dexter taking the win. He's had two pretty good races in a row there after finishing fourth in Belgium. You can see Okiki second, Riley, that one penalty so, so costly. Corby coming up nine places to get fourth place. MK Bourne fifth. Kamababo sixth. Luke. Scoring points once again in 7th. Jess in 8th. Ginger Vandy with his first points in this championship with 9th. An indecisive Mac 10th. There you can see Luke still has a fairly decent lead. It's now 20 points above Kamababo. Dexter up into 3rd. Owen down to 4th. And as I look, everyone has now scored a point. Yeah, that's what we love to see, honestly. Um, it's always a little bit heartbreaking when you see a driver over nine races uh, not scoring a single point so great to see that everyone at least made it into the points ones uh, we see there's not much field spread here I mean 20 points between Luke and Kamababa the same distance almost one point more between two, P2 and P8 yeah it was an incredibly close I mean you'd expect that on Austria being the shortest circuit in terms of time we're now going to the shortest circuit in terms of distance, and this could be Azerbaijan Mark II. It's Monaco. Yeah. Um, thankfully, Singapore isn't on the calendar, so uh, big thanks to everyone who has not chosen Singapore, uh, <laughs> because that would have been just awful. But Monaco, I mean, if we get 10 drivers finishing this, um, I'll be very, very surprised. Let's have a prediction. How many cars are getting through lap one? I'm going to go 13. Uh, lap one? I have, oh, that's a good guess, actually. I, I'm, I'm saying 12. I, my my first thought was 12. I'm sticking with 12. So the 13 is really close, yeah. We're expecting seven or eight retirements here on lap one. We could be surprised, but five lap races, you've got to go for it very early on, especially around a circuit where... DRS not really having an effect. You can only use it on the run down to Sandoval. You've got to send it whenever you take even a sniff of yeah. an opportunity. There will be retirement. Someone will end up in the wall at the hairpin as well. Yeah, and uh, we all know the meme by now about Jeff here at Monaco saying no heroics into Sandoval, please. Well, I hope he isn't saying that this time. He probably will, but... 
Yeah, you need some heroics in Descent to Bob because it's a five lap race. It's not that you have 39 laps like you usually have in a 50% league race or 78 like you have in a full race. It's five laps, so yeah, heroics in Descent to Bob, please. Yeah, and, but as Jolien Palmer said or was quoted as saying, you have to be alert on the street circuit and they're going to have to have all the eyes <laughs> facing forward here to try and make the best of things in the first couple of laps. So it looks like Kamababo is up on pole position this time around and we are going Luke trying to get alongside him straight away Kamababa moving over to try and cover off as Luke tries to go around the outside at Sandavot not able to do so as we see lots of debris flying off in the background Ooh. there Jacko's in trouble but manages to get through cleanly everyone's still in the race after turn one how did that happen our predictions may be going slightly wrong here. Okiki's got a lot of damage on his front wing, so he's going to find it hard. Already got some moves happening as Ginger Andy sends it down. Louis Della tries to see that. Yep, we are three heading. out. There we go. Risky's out. Oh, someone's got big style in there. We've got a blockage here at the hairpin. And it is being that's... caused by Owen, who was... Oh, oh boy. Out. That really... That, that is not the M25. That is a Tesco's car park. Oh, and it's going to happen again. Dexter's been spun around. Oh, no. It's been <sighs> spun around. We've had five retirements now because of all, all this chaos that is going on. Oh, That's, boy. Pete and Riley have gone off at Portier together where Button flipped... Um, their line round in his last race. Uh, that's Esty Mounts now. He's gone off. Esty Mounts is out, yeah. That is a Tabak. thing. Yeah. To 12 also won that. Oh, you have to avoid as well. That's going to be the trickiest part for all the other cars that come through there to now avoid the car that's stuck on the outside. If you carry just a bit too much speed into Tabak, well... Oh, thank goodness for Jess that that car's gone because she was also struggling there a little bit for grip as now Jacko is out as well. So we are actually down to 12. I mean, if they... Let's hope they all make it. Please don't crash in Raskar's decks. Jess. Oh, Jess not in the fight. There, okay, they go into the pits. All right. So my prediction was actually completely accurate and we have eight cars in the pit lane. So yeah, a bit, a bit like uh, what happened... At Belgium, we've had quite a lot of cars pitting early on. So you can see Kamabarbo is now leading this race still from Luke. I think if there's anywhere where you want the grid position gods to be on your side, it is here because then you don't have to miss all that chaos that was caused by a rogue commentator going for something a bit optimistic into <laughs> the Lowe's hairpin, and that caused a 12 car traffic jam there. So as you can see there, Luke just tapping the wall, coming through the swimming pool. That's knocked his end plate off and this is one circuit where you really don't want to be losing any part of your car. But he's still right behind Kamababo, maybe just staying in the DRS zone, which he'll be able to use next time around. There's only one DRS zone here, so they'll only get two shots at it. We've got Kamababo in the lead. Looks like we're going to have our first two-time winner with these two ahead, but... Khalifa and Louis Delatraz, third and fourth place, they're primed to take advantage if anything happens. Ginger Andy in fifth, pretty much running his own race at the moment. He's got 28 seconds to the car in front, nearly 15 seconds to the car behind. Yeah, for him it's going to be hopefully a, a, a non-eventful race. We'll, we'll see about that. It's still Monaco. It's a track uh, effectively tries to make you crash at every corner. So uh, no one is safe. And I'm speaking from a lot of experience, a lot of traumatic, traumatic experience. But uh, Khalifa and Louis Delatra is fighting over P3 here, as well as Kamababa and Luke fighting over the win. And that has huge, huge championship implications there at the front. Yeah, there's 20 points between them at the moment. We are already racing through, so this is round five out of nine as Kamababo taps the wall at Vascas, gets away with it without any damage. If Kamababo wins, it's a 13 point gap. If Luke wins, it's a 27 point gap. So over a race away. So he'll be hoping that he can manage to find a way past at the moment. Khalifa in third, just over a second behind and Louis Dallachaz is not able to get through. This is, we've always said, very tough circuit to overtake on. It was once described by Nelson Piquet. It's a bit like trying to find a bicycle around your living room but I imagine after winning three world titles you've got a bigger living room than most people as Louis Delatras <laughs> tries to get through at Mirabeau not able to do so he's going to think about getting a better exit coming out of the Lowe's hairpin he gets a slightly better one but you just can't go anywhere with that so this could be a lunge into the Nouvelle Chicane if he wants to try and get onto the podium 
outright. He's got a fantastic exit coming through Portier. He is close to Khalifa, but he's going to have to go for something really brave here to have any chance. And no, thinks better of it. Khalifa's cut the wall. And that's sometimes how you do it. You just pressure your opponent into a mistake, and then you get the very, very easy overtake right there into the Nouvelle Chiquet. Louis Delatraz up to P3, hitting the wall there in the swimming pool section. But uh, I think he's five. Well, oh no, he's not five. He has lots of front wing missing. But I think most cars at this point have. Uh, Khalifa might be on actually for retaking that third place if the damage on Louis Deltrez and he got a penalty as well so Khalifa if he stays close enough he might actually get the third place back on penalties meanwhile we look ahead on the final lap Luke and Kama Barbo still battling it out for the win who can get it can Kama Barbo hang on I mean on on this track more than any other it, it's certainly in his favor but maybe Luke can somehow come up with some sort of move that gets him the win. Yeah, he's too far back into this again, so this is going to have to be, I think. Oh! Kamababa has a penalty. Oh! oh Luke's Luke. round! Luke's got round there, and Delatraz is going to get in. Khalifa might have a chance as well. No, I think Luke. Yep. Yeah, he has. He's got him. So there you go. Khalifa's up into third. What we see him and Louis Delatraz have penalties, but. Kamababo does as well. It looks as though he's going to make it. Khalifa had two. Khalifa has two penalties. Sorry. No, uh, Khalifa as well. So, yeah, two sorry. as in as well. Yeah, no, <laughs> you know, yeah, completely understand. Why do we have three different twos in the English language? That's just something uh, I've realised now. <laughs> anyway, Kamababo takes the victory. Louis Della tries second. Luke gets another podium in third. He'll be grateful for that. Ginger Andy uh, will come home in fifth place. Indecisive Max got it wrong at the Lowe's hairpin there, but gets away with it. With Okiki being quite a way behind. We've had Corvi retire as well since the end of lap Ooh, one. Ginger Andy, I mean, to finish fifth, you have to finish first, you know. Uh, he did now. But that final corner, whew, that was close there with the wall. But yeah, Arno now far enough away, I think, from Indecisive. Again. The track can still catch you out, but another car most likely won't. And then Indecisive Mac and Okiki, that might get interesting here. Okiki with a whole lot of speed coming up to Mac. Can you get a move done? I don't think so. At this point, it's a little bit too late. We also got Baza and Jess fighting over P9, and Baza overcooked it into Raskas. Bud still stays ahead somehow, and Dexter will be the only one to not finish in the points or is there a penalty there's a penalty for Baza and that means Dexter will get a point Baza with the penalties had multiple apparently moves out of the top 10 yeah, so Baza in that brawn livery just missing out on the top 10 so he won't have to do any Jensen Button-esque running from the pit lane to the podium as you can see there Kamababo two victories in a row now, he'll be very pleased with that. But Luke getting another podium. I think that'll be a big sight of relief from him after nearly crashing out of the final lap at the Nouvelle Chicane. So you can see there the top 10. Kamababo, Louis Delatraz, Luke, Khalifa, Ginger Andy. Now that he's scoring points, he's got a bit of a taste for this. No penalties as well for him or Luke. So a very impressive job from the pair of them. Arnold 6th, Okiki 7th, Mac 8th, Jess Gamer 9th, Dexter 10th, Baza missing out on the points. And now... That gap has halved at the top of the standings. It is 10 points. Louis Delatraz, you're moving up into third position now ahead of Dexter and Owen. Those top three are all within a race win of each other, so it could really change at the moment. Mathematically, anyone can win it, but Luke and Kamababo are showing some supreme consistency at the moment. And any retirement or anything could really blow this wide open. Yeah, we saw that the gap was half from 20 to 10. Another win for Kamababa and another third place for Luke, and they are tied. And Kamababa would win it on count back with more wins than having three. Right now, he's already uh, winning every tiebreaker because he's the only one on two wins. Yeah, that could, that could be crucial at the end of the night because it does look like we're having some very close races. And we're going to have another one here with that fantastic long run through the Parabolica. Promotes plenty of overtaking and the stadium section at the end of the lap can be extremely tricky if you've got a bit of damage on your car. It is the Hockenheim ring and if I'm just going to quickly check like 
Does it say we have we do have dynamic weather? We know what Vane can do at this circuit. <laughs> Yeah, let's turn it into an ice rink once again, just for old time's sake. And by old time, I obviously mean last year, not too, you know, long ago. But uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. I know I know. there's one driver on this very grid who absolutely hates the rain around Germany. His name is Owen Wyatt. And uh, he was uh, participating in a charity race earlier where... It was uh, Kira McGinley and myself who got to choose the uh, got to choose the weather, and we obviously chose quite a bit of rain. And Owen was participating. He really didn't like that. <laughs> I, hey, it was monsoon conditions, and I still had intermediate tires on. And Jeff said it was going to stop raining, so I just kept them on. The safety car was ca <laughs> the safety car was catching up to me, but I was still staying on circuit, and that's all that matters. But yeah. it, it, it is looking overcast, so maybe we might get a sprinkle towards the end of the race. Main overtaking opportunity here, obviously, coming at the hairpin at turn six. Turn one, very tricky around this circuit. You see a lot of penalties and a lot of cars spinning. Yeah, I mean, you saw it in the real world with uh, who spun there? Bottas spun there and into the wall he went. Hamilton spun there and didn't end up in the wall. Uh, wasn't there another car that spawned there in turn one as well? I remember Leclerc like 180 in it the before, or 360 he did in the end. And here we go, so Baza from pole position with White Racer alongside him. We are racing here, and Baza has got a decent start there. Luke getting ahead of MK Bourne at the moment. We've got Jacko dropping down a few places. Just trying to see, I think everyone has managed to get through the first corner cleanly. So it's Baza, White Racer, Luke trying to go all the way around the outside at turn two. That's not really a possible overtaking maneuver but he's got a much better exit already he's going to try and sweep around the outside at the hairpin is my racer going to be able to hold on is he going to shove his rival wide at this moment in the race very early stages you can see luke's trying to hold on all the way around the outside and in the end racer just has enough and now luke's going to go instantly defensive from mk born got camababo down in six oh they touch it mk born's around and into the wall and he's out of the race and sometimes he does have to pull out of a move like that you weren't alongside. You have to, to. Sometimes you have to live to fight another day, and that's what happened here to MK Ball. That he did not pull out of that move. Decided to stay in there, and ultimately it cost him because uh, Luke had no regard for him. As uh, there is Khalifa in the gravel trap. That's where Hakkinen once went off. I think the didn't his rear wing suddenly just disappear. I off the car, he, he just. I, yeah, I think he had a, like a punk, a tire blowout at like 190 miles per hour, and I remember they putting his car in the science museum just as a testament to how strong F1 cars are. So Khalifa's pitting, Ginger Andy's been off circuit as well, but he is not pitting. Estimax is dropping down a few places here, and it wouldn't surprise me if that is turn one where he has gone off there. So that white and blue car off of the circuit, the white and blue colours seem to be finding themselves in a bit of trouble around here so if we saw Luke with that tribute to the Williams team is up ahead Bazza's now having to defend from Racer and is Luke going to try the same as what MK Bourne did to him no he's going for the outside and that is a much better chance here because it gives you the inside just in front of the Mercedes grandstand Racer's trying his best to hold on not able to do so and in doing so he's left himself vulnerable to Owen who's just going to try and sweep all the way around the outside He's off the circuit. I'm not sure he'll be allowed to keep that. And yeah, Racer goes ahead for a bit. But oh, he's trying it again round the outside. That is a fantastic manoeuvre. Oh, and Racer sends it in the sax curve. And uh, I'm pretty sure that was a little bit too aggressive there. And Racer lets him back through. So Owen oh, back up to P3. I always thought for a second that the Racer may end up doing a Vettel there. And ending up in the gravel trap. Maybe taking Owen with him, actually. But uh, that did not turn out to be the case. However, way overcooked there from Y Racer and uh, Night and Out. That is turn one. Yeah, and is Jacko is around. Oh, Jacko, get out of the way. Get out of the way. Has, yeah, I, okay. I, I think Jacko's reacted to seeing uh, Night and go around. Ooh, and Issy Matt almost ran into Night and there. Remember, no ghosting, so he had to take evasive action. I, he, he did hit him. He's got a three second penalty for a severe collision with a retired car, which I'm sure I was thinking is a bit harsh at the moment we're watching Dexter and Riley 17th and 18th go for a Riley getting wheel spin coming out of that corner but no he stays on circuit so these two 16th and 17th only Khalifa behind them at the moment Luke 
now in the lead of this race trying to pull away from Baza Owen he tried a fantastic move around the outside of here last lap not able to do so is he going to think about it around the outside of the tax curve it is slightly banged not this time around he always, he's looking very pacey at the moment Owen it looks like he wants his second victory and getting back into this championship hunt after two less than optimal races I'm sure he would say and he's got fantastic pace at the moment not going to be able to go into turn one he's going to have DRS on the straight down to turn two Baza keeping it nice and clean but it's all about that run to the hairpin yeah that's where you want to be in second place because it's such it's, it's just so long that you will be ahead most likely at the end of the parabolic and into the hairpin Meanwhile, I'm checking to see if everyone takes turn one well, and yep, so far no spins. But here goes Owen on Baza, and Baza trying to cut. Oh, sorry, my bad. Trying to the cut back to no avail, and Owen now up to P2. Now he's hunting down Luke. Yeah, Owen hunting down Luke, but one and a half seconds with one and a half laps to go. It's going to be a bit of a tall order for the Northern Irish man. We've got Corey there, fourth position. He's having his best race so far tonight Louis Delatraz battling past Ginger Andy in fact I think he's just letting Ginger Andy through we might not have much choice to let him through because he's got big damage on his front wing and he's 3.5 seconds ahead of Cara Barber who would desperately love to take that ninth position he is fighting for every point at the moment especially knowing that the man who is leading this championship at the moment with four rounds to go three after this is on to the final lap of the race Owen has got the gap down to 1.1 seconds. Oof. I was looking at Okiki and he was mighty struggling on the exit of turn one. Had three slides. One to the right, one to the left, and then another one to the right. Uh, thankfully, he was able to keep the car on track. But yeah, a lot of drivers just decided, you know what? Uh, before I spin, I'd rather just go wide. Uh, do you see that? It's quite uh, insane to watch here. But yeah, let's see if Owen... He's not close enough. It's 1.1 seconds and there's not that many overtaking opportunities coming up. There's no more DRS zones coming up, in fact. So uh, it really looks like the end here for Owen. Does Luke have a penalty? Let me quickly check. He does not even have a warning. Owen has one warning, no penalties. Baza, no penalties. Corey is the first one with a penalty. Yeah, and he's fighting hard to try and get past Baza on the circuit. It won't make any difference, and he's not going to be able to do it, but it is low. A second victory tonight, and that is a big step towards getting that T-shirt. Owen is second. Baza nearly losing it across the finish line. Finishes ahead of Corby, who's got so many penalties. He's dropped down to seventh. Arnold fourth. Racer fifth. Okiki six Corby seventh. Ginger Andy points again in eighth. Louis Delatraz will be in ninth. Calabarbo did get 10th place just not able to get it on penalties so that is really going to shake things up the order because Owen let's not forget he was only fifth in the championship and after a few races with quite a few retirements only two there that might be the lowest we've had tonight I think yeah most likely uh considering how the other races shaped out to be I mean you again you have to remember no ghosting so on most tracks uh that, that's you know, there are some spots where it's easy to crash, especially Azerbaijan, if you think back to that race. Um, Monaco, obviously, as well. It's really hard to see if there is a wreck around the corner. And yes, you have yellow flags, but, you know, sometimes you just try to floor it and, you know, see what happens and try to get away with it. But around here, every spot of the track can be seen in advance pretty much apart from maybe the exit of the happen but you're so slow that it doesn't matter and so not that many incidents here and ultimately another win for luke and now the gap should be at least a camo barbo who scored only one point the gap should be up to 34 it might be that someone else is taking second place although i'm not so sure about that but luke may have clutched it here yeah, and yeah be... it is 34 points to camo barbo yeah, just see the top 10 of the race. Owen second, Baza with his best result of the night in third. Arnold fourth, Racer fifth, Okiki sixth. Corey losing three places to seventh. Ginger Andy eighth. Louis Delatraz ninth place from 20th on the grid, gaining 11th place as Carabaro could only gain one to finish 10th. And there we go. It is now 34 points at the top of the standings. That is a very, very sizable gap with only three races remaining. Let's not forget 
Got Kamababa a second. Owen back up to third. Now just one point ahead of Louis in that battle for third position. They could find themselves fighting their way up for second and maybe first if things go wrong. But Luke, he'll be hoping that the game is kind to him and just puts him towards the front of the grid on all these remaining circuits. He does not want to get stuck in any midfield battles, especially around Hungary, which has been described as Monaco without the barriers. Yeah, and uh, just to talk about that gap between Owen and Louis Deltras, one point. I have to say, just from a personal perspective, I really hope Louis overtakes Owen, because if Owen beats out Louis Deltras in this five-lap championship, I will never hear the end of it. And I don't want that. So please, Louis, if you're listening, if you're watching, after the race, maybe, after the uh, the stream, if you did it, thank you very much. If not, oh, really? <laughs> because I know Owen will always talk about that. <laughs> I mean, I can't say I blame him, to be honest. If I did that, I'd be... I'd yeah, fair enough. Same. Fair enough. But yeah, uh, Hungary, track where... I mean, you can overtake... It. It always, it's always been called Monaco without the barriers, as you mentioned, but you can actually overtake it. It's just a bit more difficult. It's not that bad, you know. Um, it is... You only have really two overtaking or three if you want to stretch it you have turn one you have uh, does it count as turn two or turn three that's a really good question turn two, um, turn two yeah and then you have up the hill uh, towards turn four that's the one if you want to stretch it maybe if you get a good run through the S's of turns uh, eight to ten or eight to eleven rather then you can try it to turn twelve the ninety degree right hander but uh, yeah, there's there's not that many long straights, and so the start finish straight is your best opportunity, really, uh, almost your only opportunity. Again, the other ones, if you want to risk it, and I mean we have a driver whose name is Risky, so maybe he's going to try some in other places, turn two, turn four, turn twelve. But mm. yeah, we'll have to see. Underway this time. It's okay, on pole with MK Born alongside him. MK getting a very good start there on the run down to turn one. It is an exceptionally long run here at the Hungara when we're four wide into the first corner and it's Risky who comes out ahead of that Baza in second, losing it slightly. That forces Okiki wide. I'm sure he didn't mean to do that. He was just trying to hold on to his car and that allows MK Born to have a go back. So it looked as though MK was going to be taking the lead of this race at one point. He's now down into fourth position as Indecisive Mac tries to get his way in. Oh, Luke in the wall! Luke's in the wall, falls down to 14th, and Owen is completely out. Yeah, Luke. And Luke's off the track as well. Risky's out. That is exit of turn four. Oh my goodness. I already yeah, have our first two retirements. First two retirements, and two of the guys at near the head of the championship. Kamabarbo's only in 16th at the moment. And he's got some, well, there's a lot of debris flying off. I couldn't quite tell which car it's off. SK oh, is out, Co Corey. Corey. Oh no! And uh, Ginger Andy was uh, was off as well, but he can continue at least. But he gets a five second time penalty for causing a severe collision. I think from the the images we saw, yeah, it was a severe collision with Arno because it ended Arno's race. So we're down to fifteen now. Luke down in fourteenth. Kamababu in twelfth. This might throw the championship wide open again. Luke going into the pits. As is Kamababo, Ginger Andy's staying out. He has end plate damage and not much more, so kind of makes sense for him to just stay out and hope to salvage something with other cars maybe getting damage. I mean, what up ahead? Okiki, MK Born, Baza. It's all really close there. Yeah, it's extremely close here. These guys just fighting for their worth. You got Mac. 5th, Gamer, Jess 6th, Jacko 7th, Louis Delatroz 8th, Speed Nathan 9th place. They're all within a second of the car in front. So next time they'll be able to use DRS on the run down to turn 1 and then again into turn 2. And Louis, he'll be hoping to fight his way up through the order. His three guys ahead of him in the championship are out of the race and last and last but one at the moment. He needs to get more than four points, you feel. But it's going to be very hard. DRS train is definitely going to be enabled. Man who's going to find himself under big pressure, unless he can close up a couple of tenths of a second, will be this man in the ball livery. You've got Khalifa representing a bit of a Bahrain flag Ooh. with a twist there. That would have been ideal on, an M on a McLaren Honda. As Jacko's gone wide there, that's allowed yeah. Louis to get through. 
Yeah, Jacko was trying to overtake Jess. They touched. Jacko almost spun around, had to catch the car back. Uh, that allowed Lou Delatres to go to the inside then for turn 13. And then Jacko went wide, completely unsettled there still from turn 12. And now he gets overtaken by Knighton as well, who moves up to P8. So Jacko really a shambolic final sector and first sector so far of lap three. Uh, he is now down to be now, but he's still there. And Khalifa overtakes Baza <laughs> through turn three. That is not exactly the overtaking spot you would think it is, but my goodness. Um, yeah, makes it work. And uh, I just, for Khalifa's sake, I'm going to say, L Luke, you better not talk about him for the rest of this race because third place, I mean, that that's, I think at this point, that's the best position he's been in so far, this championship. Yeah, it is indeed. I must, he must say, he planned that move right from the DRS zone, heading towards turn one, round the outside of Baza at turn two, and then nothing Baza could do, obviously, to defend, heading into turn three. And Khalifa, is he going to settle for third, or is he going to go for a bit more? Okiki in the lead of this race. MK Bourne second, Khalifa in third. Baza's now going to find himself under pressure from Mac in fourth. Jess has got Louis all over the back of her. Speed Knight and Jacko racer there there as well okiki fastest lap of the race quickly beaten by khalifa so here we go drs train is active you've got jess louis and speed knight and all close together speed down the inside of one down the inside of two and that is a fantastic maneuver from him and louis in the end sticking in seventh place jess lost two places speed knight and though that's how he won the jacko car championship that's how he won this five lapper when it was done on ilr last autumn he is now in sixth position and it's getting a bit tighter for the lead of the race as well yeah as you would hope mk born getting just that bit closer and khalifa as well making this a three-way battle and khalifa running white there through the chicane of turn six and seven and losing what he just gained now i commentators cursed him I'm so sorry. It's not just Luke. I mean, maybe it's Khalifa. Uh, who just... I, I really don't know. Maybe he's the common denominator in all of this. But he's trying to catch back up to the top two. To Okiki and MK Bourne. Let's hope we get a battle for this win. Okiki, he doesn't hope for that. And Luke is out. And he's not the only one there. There's Riley as well. They've come together on the exit of turn five. How does that happen? But that's a zero, a, a definitive zero for Luke. It's a likely zero for Kamababo as well. He's in 14th right now. So that really throws the championship up wide open. Yes, uh, Pete's gone very deep into turn one. He tried to get past two cars last time. I think he's tried to get past two more here. And he's ended up losing a place to Louis Delatron. He, he sends again. it down to two. That's going to send them both wide here. That might give Jacko a chance. And you can see Speed Knight are way off the circuit. Gained two places last time around. Lost two here. And Louis, I'm surprised he's not got more damage. In fact, he has quite substantial front wing damage. You can see him running off the circuit there. It's a good job. But God, the wing is so twisty. That might just save him. Jacko, he's going to try it. Not into the chicane this time around. Back in fifth. Baza is hanging on to fourth. Out in front, though. Okay, he started on pole positions kept it fairly clean up out in front you can see no damage on his car just locking up slightly there into turn 12 but it's looking good for him to take the victory here mk born after being involved in an incident last time it looks like he's going to be second and khalifa should come across the line to take third so we've had two guys take two wins but we've got another new winner here tonight it's okiki comes across the line to take the win mk in second khalifa in third baza will be fourth. Mac cross comes home in fourth after penalties and Louis Delachos nearly getting overtaken on the line. In fact, Dexter got ahead of him on penalties. A few guys must have had quite a few penalties there. Dexter sixth, Louis seventh, Jess eighth, Pete ninth, Jacko getting the final point. So although Luke has had his first retirement, he's had his first bad race, hasn't cost him too much. Yeah, meanwhile, uh, White Racer with uh, in the left front wheel missing in P11 across the line, so he must have crashed it on the line there. Riley coming through in 13th, Jinjandi with 12th, Riley coming through in 13th, and Camo Barber, no points for him either, 14th. That, I don't know what the championship looks like at this point. I know that, obviously, Luke, who had 34 points uh, of a gap, is still in the lead because he has to 
mathematically, because you can't get more than 26, and 34 is more than 26. At least that's what I'm told. So uh, <laughs> that is Luke definitely still in the lead, but the question is now by how much? Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me thinking about it. He's, I think he's still going to have that 34 point lead over Kamababo and Louis might have moved up into third but we'll have a check after we check the results of that race Okiki, MK Bourne, Khalifa, Mac, Baza, Dexter, Louis, Jess, Speed Knight and then Jacko were the top 10 here are the standards this is now Okiki actually he's had a couple wow. of good races he shot up into third tied on points with Kamababo Louis fourth Owen in fifth mathematically it is only them five who can win but Lou can secure it with one race to go. Yeah, he all he needs, I mean, he can effectively even be outscored by Kamababa or Okiki by seven points, and he would still win it. So he can, a second place for Luke in the next race is enough to, to clinch the title already. Yeah, indeed. Uh, good news for you, Austin, that Louis now moved up ahead of Owen. It's only five yes. points. So <laughs> I that saw that. James Dexter's moved up. You can see what a night Khalifa's had. And MK Bourne, actually. MK doubling his points in one race there. Baza with a pretty good result as well. Just getting into the top 10. It's only two races to go. It's looking pretty good for Luke, but that's what happens. If you start further down the field on a five-lap race, there's always going to be a bit of chaos. And Mexico, the run down to turn one here, we've seen it many times. There is usually always some contact. Yeah, and it's, it's one of those tracks where... I mean, we talk about Monaco and everyone knows what's going to happen it doesn't prevent it but you know maybe it delays it a little bit we saw no wins we saw a couple of incidents but no one retired in turn one in monaco mexico is always a track where you know no one really thinks about oh yeah turn one such a heavy braking zone yeah that's definitely something gonna happen no one thinks about that and so i think maybe mexico might be one of the most dangerous turn ones monza is another spot that unfortunately we don't have on our calendar here on our five lab championship calendar but uh, that's also one where everyone thinks, oh yeah, turn one, heavy braking zone. Got to be careful. Mexico, no one thinks about that. No one's like, oh yeah, I got to be careful. I got to be careful. So we might see a couple of crashes here. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, this is where I think it was 2016, Beto went on his expletive laden rant against Charlie Whited after being, having his feathers ruffled a bit by Max Verstappen, who's definitely done a bit of that over the years. And this track seems to have gone well for Verstappen. Very fast speeds obviously extremely good overtaking opportunities into turn one but quite often you see cars go for lunges into the stadium section as well you can make it work into there yeah there's a lot of overtaking opportunities here uh turn one as we mentioned turn four uh turn 12 13 if you can't complete it turn 12 uh and so certainly we should see plenty of action the the most important thing is that you must be able to stick with the car in front through the S's of turn 7 to 11. Yeah, indeed, you must be able to. So there we go. Risky at the front. Louis and Owen up near the front of the field as well. We come a barbo. Luke starting way down the order. So it's going to be hard for him. Here we go. Oh, already. three wide. Delatraz, Owen. Oh, Whoa, wide. Owen gets pushed around him. Oh, my goodness. Who's going to get it? Owen goes the deepest, touches with Delatraz, Delatraz slightly spins there, catches the car back up, and it is Owen in the lead, Risky second, Delatraz third, Riley fourth, Knight in fifth, uh, let's see, so far all good, I expected at least one retirement in turn one, that didn't happen, maybe turn four, oh, this is another car park right here, that is our nose spun around, he's down to last now. But it seems like a lot of debris. Nope, that is MK Bourne in the wall as well. That's his complete front wing gone. Oh. And he reverses onto the track and into the path of Arno. Oh my goodness. Yep, that is a three second time penalty for MK Bourne. That is definitely deserved for an unsafe re entry. And uh, thankfully, the game does recognize that one. But uh, up front, Owen. I really don't like seeing that. <laughs> He's two positions ahead of Louis Dallatraz. But hey, there's still four more laps to go and anything can happen. Let's yeah. see what uh, Risky maybe as well, because there's a long run up here. Risky in the slipstream uses overtake mode. And uh, Owen, I don't think he has much to defend this. 
Uh, Risky, Risky might just is send he sending it? He is, yep, and they touch, and Risky almost spun around. Can keep it on track, though. And is he going to try it again this time? No, he goes to medium and doesn't even attempt the overtake here. So, Owen safe for another lap. But next lap, it's DRS time. And the detection point will be after turn 14, before turn 15, which doesn't really, maybe doesn't mean much to some viewers, but uh, it's it's after the right-hand kink in the stadium section. Yeah, so Owen could find himself in a bit of trouble here, and everyone in the top seven. Oh, he's going to have risky. DRS. He might find himself in trouble earlier, actually. Risky, going to go for it. There's contact between them. There's still a gap there for Risky to get through, and he has done it. He's going to go deep into that corner. That's not <laughs> ideal. Owen's got off the circuit as well. If I was Louis, I'd just be licking my fingers at this, because this looks as though it's going to be ending one yeah. way at the moment. But Owen's still ahead, but he won't have DRS. That will be Risky's. I believe Ginger Randy well, not gets yet. the penalty. So, and not yet. And it's a long way down this straight. Yeah, and uh, it's not yet DRS because the detection point is obviously on the previous lap. So for and we only have one detection point for both DRS zones as well. So that means the detection point only activates now to a uh, lap three. So only for lap four and five do we get the DRS. That's about the the worst we can have. For uh, for a race, we only have one detection point, and it's at the end of the lap, and the DRS straights are at the start of the lap. So really, three laps without DRS, and only on the fourth we get it. Yeah, Owen holding off then for now. There's a lot of movement behind Jacko's in 13th at the moment. He's battling with a championship leader. Luke has got a bit of oh. falling damage, but he's keeping it pretty clean at the moment. It Go back to the front of the field. Risky still there, all over the back of Owen, and Risky nearly <laughs> losing it. Yeah, I was looking at Owen's car and he does have an end plate missing as Knighton goes for a move into the stadium on Riley. It's not there. Can't make it stick and has to wait behind Riley, who has the, uh, was it the Williams 2003 inspired car, right? Oh, and Knighton's around almost. Gets a little spin on there. Meanwhile, Owen trying to break the toe, completely weaving like a madman. And Risky getting closer and closer. Owen now finally defending, or is he? Yes, he is. Oh, Risky, fantastic overtake round the outside. Has the inside here for turn two. Now the outside for turn three again. Owen almost spins, and that is Risky into the lead. And now maybe Owen is sitting duck for Louis Dallatras as well. Not yet, but there's one more lap to go after this one. This one isn't even close to being over. Yeah, there's a lot of action happening here at the moment. Calabarbo is in six. I think a stink stand that would be enough to just about keep it going on to the next round. See Owen in second. Can he challenge back at Risky? But it's these S's where it really costs you having that front wing damage. And now he's got himself a two second time penalty as well. P in fifth. He's definitely going to be losing his championship crown. But he's putting up a fight. Can he end up? on the top step of the podium in one of the two remaining races either here in Sochi. He's going to have to go some for it to happen here. We're just about to start the final lap and this time Risky is going to have to be the one who goes for the slalom down the straight yeah, to try and break does. the toe. <laughs> that is amazing to watch. You would never get away with this in a league race but this way here is a five lap championship as Luke, Racer, Corey are all out. And Owen Final sends corner. it around the outside. Sorry to interrupt, Austin. Owen sends it one's way off circuit there. Really compromised his run now, heading down towards turn four. And I did see uh, Corby and Luke retire. And I wonder if Race has just ran into them. Is Louis going to have a go down into turn four? Not Owen's this time too around. deep. Whoa. Around the outside. Now Delatras finds the grip there on the outside. What a move! fantastic overtake it's still not done but he gets the better run out of the double right hand of turn six and now has the inside for seven they touch and this time Delatras makes it stick up to p2 didn't have to because owen does have a penalty but why not still do it and owen wants that position back at least on track and does it into turn 12 Delatras goes the long way 
And it's Risky who will most likely take the win here. Owen tries the cutback on Dalatraz. They touch again. Oh, and Owen almost spins Dalatraz around, touches him again. Riley gets big damage from that as well. So Risky ends up <laughs> taking the win. Dalatraz is going to come across the line in a set. Come on, second. What? Where did he come from? He was six last time I checked, so I'm not quite yeah. sure what happened there. Everyone had penalties apart from him, it seems. Every, absolutely everyone had penalties. Delatrez third, Owen fourth, Riley fifth. Look at how close they were. Four and a half tenths between those three. And Okiki sixth, Isimat seventh, Ginger Andy eight, Khalifa nine, Baza gets the final point, Knight and P11, Mac 12, Dexter will come home in 13th. Will he keep it after penalties? Yes, because Jacko has a puncture front left, and MK Bourne coming through the final. How did he get a puncture in a five lap race? And Jacko also, 14th. How did MK oh, Bourne no. get disqualified oh. in a five lap race? Yeah, Arno, MK Bourne both out, and Jess also with a puncture in P15 then. Uh, after Arno and MK Born both crash out. Wow. Yeah, absolutely hectic at Mexico. A lot of that Owen fighting really hard, obviously, with his... So, the gap. 16 points between Camobabo and Luke. Will anyone else be in the championship hunt? That's the question. We'll see that in a second. Well, White Owl's mentioned here that... Um... ALT are uh, P1 and 3 and I think Oki he's going to be 26 points behind but I don't think he's still able to do it because I think Luke will have more second places I don't know <laughs> but no, yeah no. exactly Okiki and Louis Delatraz both on 26 points uh, Louis didn't win a race so he can't make it he's out of contention Okiki I, yeah I mean he had one win compared to Luke's two wins so he needs a win and then second places. I don't know how that shapes up third places, maybe. Luke definitely had too many third places. We know that. He had like two or three. Yeah. So but Kamababa really the only one in this still who can try and mount a challenge here. 16 points is the gap between Luke and Kamababa. And really, Kamababa has to hope that he starts towards the front and Luke towards the very back of the grid. Yeah, that could be really the big thing there at the next race around the Sochi Autodrome and we said like Mexico has turn one where it's extremely tricky Russia it's not a long run to the first corner but that is just a flat out kink it's a long long run to turn two and a heavy braking zone and I think maybe though the last two races where we've said we expect to see a turn one crash there hasn't been one so they might be a bit careful there and then all hell has broken loose later on in the lap yeah, we might see the same here. Turn three is a very tricky one. It, it makes you feel like you can run two or maybe even three wide. But uh, as you pick up speed, it gets harder and harder to control. So we might see incidents in turn three. I mean, there's reasons. There was the torpedo corner at this point. So uh, that's definitely a spot I'd be looking out for. I'd try to stay on top of that as much as possible by going through the back of the grid and back of the field and try to see what happens there if something happens I'll shout if it has championship implications or let's say top 5 implications let's say Lou, Kamababa, Okiki Louis Daltraz or Owen yeah so it's only Lou and Kamababa we think have a realistic chance of winning this championship here all Luke needs to worry about is finishing in the top 5 and it will be his Kamababa will be hoping that he starts way further up the field than his rival. Five laps around Russia. Expect to see lots of overtaking. Expect to see lots of penalties. They do play a big factor here. You've got two long DRS zones on opposite sides of the track. So that's going to play a big part. And that turn 13 corner, having to brake while turning. Those who have anti-lock brakes might find it a bit tougher to go for a lunge down there than those who don't. And... And we have rain. Oh, my God. Rain for the championship decider. That is... I mean, is it cruel or is it fun? I think it's both. I mean, I, this is all done on dynamic weather. So there's no way we could yes. have predicted this. But if we could have chosen how to end it fairly show a title decider in the rain for us commentators and for you guys watching at home or wherever, wherever you are watching is what you will have wanted so is it going to be Luke following in the steps of White Out and Pete Knighton to take this five lap championship or can Kamababo still show his pace he's done very well at points tonight there we go it's Jess 
on the pole position. Jacko in second. Jacko uh, completely jump start. jumping for start. He's got to drive through penalty, but he's done the right thing. He's just going for it here. He yes. might as well try and get away with it at the moment. So Jess in second, Arno third, but watch this. Battle Viley trying to go round the outside of MK Bourne. And Arno just going to try and slip it up the inside into turn two. You can see, you can see that. Arno up, trying to fight. Jess hanging on just about for now. Arno's gone wide. He's gone round, but gets away with it. So Jess in the net leading this Ooh, race. Owen, Owen spun right in front of Luke, and Luke made a, did a great job of avoiding that in the rain nonetheless there's more spinning ahead of Luke my goodness Luke Delatraz is out and oh my goodness Luke I mean if that's not a code brown for Luke right there then I don't know what is Owen out as well so that means that at the very least Luke Delatraz will finish the uh, championship ahead of Owen which at least gives me a bit of a breather <laughs> right, but uh, as Luke well. Luke in 12th, Kamababa only down in 10th, but we saw last time he was 6th until he crossed the line, then he finished in P2. Yeah, so I anything's still possible. Yeah, SD Mats has been round as well. They're really finding it tricky in these wet conditions. It's Jets with the net lead of the race at the moment. Buzzer in second, Racer will be third, Dexter will be fourth. Of course, uh, Jacko having Luke. to serve that drive through. Yeah, Luke goes for an overtake on MK Bourne here into turn 13. MK Bourne does fight this and keeps the position so he's not giving up that quickly he doesn't care that this is for the championship here he says you know what you have to take that position out of my cold dead hands and mk born holding on to that meanwhile kamabar was struggling to get past more drivers there's corey trying to get back onto the racing line and and right uh, no risky so risky almost spins there and oh corey almost spins as well and runs into risky here this is really, really bad for Kamababa. He needs to try and clear this. I don't want to say traffic because obviously it's a small position, but this this battling and he tries now to the inside. Oh, this is not the smartest call, maybe. Oh, Corey swiping across Risky and yeah, Kamababa making the right call there. Breaking early and still too late as he overcooks it into turn two and MK Ball maybe trying as Luke is still at 12th now fighting with Ginger Andy. That's someone going off. Everything's risky. Going risky's off. Risky's out. Oh, Ginger Andy's hit Luke. Luke is out Luke. of the race. Oh wow! That it's means okay. Kamababo needs second place. He needs yeah. second place. He needs second get... or first. Second or first will do it for Kamababo. He is currently in eighth position. Now there's a bit of a gap to Khalifa ahead, but it's definitely doable. Uh, he goes best. past Corey. Corey's fighting it, and Corey's going deep into that double left-hander here of turn eight and nine. And Corey keeps the position now onto the back straight. They go. Is Kamobaba going to fancy a move into turn 13 in these conditions? It's certainly tricky. Yeah, Kamobaba, he's just got to send it whenever he has an opportunity at the moment. And he does. And there we go. Into Ooh. turn 13. Not quite enough. Corby saw him coming and that's compromised Corby's own line through there but not able to make a move. I know Kiki and Indecisive Mac might try and close their way up on this at the moment. We've got more yellow flags. Yeah, that's for Arno. Oh turn 3. It's yeah, gone now. Arno has gone off. Jacko still staying out in front despite having that drive through penalty oh. which he will have to serve next time. Oh! Around. Kamababa lost front wing on Corey, ran into the back of him multiple times there, and Jacko has to serve his penalty at the end of this lap or else he gets disqualified. You have three laps to serve a drive through penalty, and oh my god, Kamababa goes off there. Now is easy picking for Okiki, who doesn't even try. Okiki yeah. just says, you know what, I'll, I'll, stick, I'll stick behind. But yeah, massive damage now for Kamobaba's front wing on the right side. End plate gone. Part of the wings itself gone. Only the base is still there. And in these conditions, in these treacherous conditions, obviously that is a huge, huge downside, huge disadvantage to the championship contender. This one, he needs nine drivers to crash out to have a chance. And if there's any conditions where that could be possible... It is these at the moment, but it's going to be a very tough ask indeed. As you can see now, MK Bourne has managed to get past Okama Barbo outside of the points, nearly retiring completely there. That's the end plate gone from the other side of the car. At least he'll have a bit more balance now. And Luke here saying he hopes to God 
that camo doesn't gain too much. You, you might be safe unless there's any absolute carnage up ahead. So Jacko still leading this race, but he has that penalty. Jess in a second, closing in on Jacko. With could Gaza. this, could this be Jess's first win? Could very well happen. The thing, the thing I'd be more worried about for her is you've got Vasey, uh, Speed Knight and Dexter Khalifa all closing up pretty fast as well. Maybe not Dexter so much now as he's just had a bit of a bump from Khalifa but keeps it pointing in the right, right direction as Racer goes down the inside of Baza. Jacko there, he goes oh, into the Oh, Racer spins! Racer spins into the pit entry and he's out! Penultimate corner spins back into the pit entry, into the wall, he's out of the race. Jacko's still in the pit lane there. He will come out behind Corey, behind Okiki, behind MK Bourne, I'm pretty sure. Yep, and behind Indecisive Mac as well. Camel Barber coming into the pit lane to repair their front wing with two laps remaining and Jess still in the lead ahead of Knighton, Baza, and Dex Dexter. Yeah, Baza tried to defend there into turn two, just went too deep. Obviously, we a bit of damage on his front wing as well. And you can see how much it's costing him around this circuit. Dexter now up into third place and Khalifa following through as well. But Jess, in the lead of this race, she's suddenly got a lot more pressure. No disrespect for Baza, but having Speed Knight oh. behind us, he nearly runs into the back of our And there comes Knighton! There comes Knighton, did they touch? Oh, Jess, watch out! Ooh. She almost didn't see him there, didn't give him enough space, and that would have hurt. That would have been her spun around. Knighton trying to look into the uh, turn 10 here, and now on the back straight. No DRS in these conditions, you gotta remember that. But will Knighton send it? I think he will. Ooh. Jess also late on the brakes. She still has the inside for the next corner here for turn 14, and it's one that falls away a little bit, so she keeps the lead. She's done a great job. I will say she got a great exit out of turn 10, so even with uh, the slipstream. There's speed. Khalifa. Look at Khalifa now trying to overtake Knight, and they're side by side. That should give Jess a bit of breathing room as Knight now takes back second place. But, ooh, a little bit of a slide there from Knight as well. So My goodness. The, start the final lap of this Jack of Car Championship. It looks as though Luke is going to take the title with Kamababo down in 12th place. Who's going to take the victory though here? Because Speed Knighted, he's not thinking about the win at the moment. He's just thinking about staying in second place as Khalifa tries to go round the outside on the run down to turn two. There's wheel banging between the two of them. Khalifa and Knight are both running off the circuit. Dexter's going to go down the outside of one of them. Slots in behind Khalifa now into third position. But he's, we've seen Speed Knight and go for a few lunges on this circuit. That kind of racing, you can get away with it in Jackal Car more than you can in other leagues and he's been a master of it taking the championship he took the last five lap championship but he will be losing his crown to luke tonight the race window just still ahead just over three quarters of a second at the moment gets a bit of a slide on though coming out of turn six on the run down to turn seven can khalifa steal it away We'll have to wait and see. Not too far to go. Is he going to go for a move down the inside there? That's going to compromise his line. Big style, though. And you can just see the wheel spin he's got. That could have clinched it for Jess. Yeah, very much so. And usually, you know, we as commentators are not supposed to be uh, sort of partisan in any way. But, man, if Jess wins, I hope she does. I hope she's able to clinch that victory. Oh! oh! That was Khalifa and Knighton coming together. Someone just torpedoed. One just torpedoed Knighton. the other. I don't know who torpedoed whom, but my god, that was a violent impact. I was on board. And meanwhile, with... Jess through the final two corners. She's got seven tenths of a gap to Dexter. She has no penalties either. And coming through the final corner, Jess will take victory around Russia in the five lap championship finale. And importantly, because of a rule that I just made up, that final race actually, not in mind double points, it had 20 times points. So Jess <laughs> is the <laughs> champion. Yes, I'm all for it. <laughs> so Jess with the victory, Baza second, Dexter third, oh. Okiki gaining 14 places there to do well in fourth. MK Bourne fifth, Indecisive sixth, Khalifa seventh, Corey eighth, Jacko ninth, SD Wats tenth, Kamababo ended up not finishing. So that means it is official. 
ART underscore J Luke is the five lap champion. Yeah, and I mean, if, if you have that many good results, I mean, we're talking, did he have four or five podiums? It was pretty much half the races, he's, he's ended up on the podium. So if you're that consistent, and, and Luke certainly was, you deserve to win the championship. And uh, yeah, what a way to end this. Jess in the rain, nonetheless. This is very tricky conditions. And she managed to end up on top in the final race. Fantastic to see. But wow, what a, what a championship it was. Yeah, I hope you've enjoyed that. One hour 45 of action. We've had plenty of exciting races. Jess taking the victory in the finale. Baza second, Dexter third. But... For the championship, you can say Luke in first. Okiki, he had a good run towards the end. That got him the runner-up spot. Kamababo third. Louis just beating out Owen for fourth and fifth. Dexter <sighs> sixth. Baza <laughs> seventh. Khalifa eighth. MK Born ninth. Speed Risky there rounded out the top ten in the championship. And you can see there, at least everyone getting points. Jacko. Oh, unfortunately. <laughs> I mean, Jacko, <laughs> uh, uh, I mean, I was, I, I said, I was uh, going to bring up the fact that in the fair, in the, in the previous Five Lab Championship, where uh, Pete Knighton won, Jacko was the first car to retire. I think he's just continuing the trend of not doing well in these Five Lab Championships by finishing down in 20th. I mean, he, he, he raced in the charity race, and he's raced in this. He, he just does it for the enjoyment, but I'm sure he'd have hoped to not, unfortunately, get the wooden spoon. Owen getting fifth place. Jess with the final race win. Luke obviously gets himself the nice t-shirt, as I think Owen's now threatening me to say, you better have liked my livery. Well, <laughs> we still he have threatened me before make. the stream as well. He we threatened me before the stream. Make. Who is going to get the PSN yeah, but... voucher? Who who are you gonna go for? Oh, I am going. Um, I am going to go for. And this was one of the ones that when I saw it first time, I did. It, I wasn't a massive fan, but it's sort of grown on me. I really like Camarabos. I think it just worked well with the white and the purple and the bit of the dash of red. All that's right, what, that's who it, I'm it, going for. Who are you? So, interesting, interesting. Who, who are you uh, going for? Because we ha we have to I'm... decide between us. Yeah, um, I'm going for uh, the brawn. I think, is is that Baza? Yeah. I so think Baza, for... yeah, Baza was in the brawn. I, I really like that brawn-inspired livery. I think it's a very nice take on one of the most dominant cars uh, in Formula 1 history, even though it was only a year, but it was a dominant car at the time. And uh, certainly part of F1 history. I really like that one. So I, I have to give it to Baza. Now, how do we decide? Well, do you know what? I'm going to make this a bit simple. I am going to go for Siri heads and tails. <laughs> heads will be Kamababo. Yeah, tails, and tails will, will be Baza. Siri, heads or tails? Tails. Did you hear so that? it is Baza. That is Baza. Baza. And to be honest, I nearly changed my mind to Baza, but earlier before the stream, <laughs> I said, "Right, we'll go for heads or tails if we can't decide." Yeah. Baza with the brawn takes home the ten pound PSN voucher. Luke, he gets the T-shirt and the title of five lap championship. And it's fair to say, Jack O'Carr ending twenty nineteen with a bang there. Yeah, definitely. Uh, not just one. I think that was about uh, 20 in nine races. <laughs> probably more, actually. Probably more incidents that we had there. But what a championship. And I, I can't wait for it to come back uh, next year again. Or maybe maybe even earlier, let's hope. But uh, certainly a fantastic end to the Jacko Car season. And uh, we'll see whether Luke can defend his title. Yeah, we'll see whether he can defend his title whenever the next five-lap championship. And we'll see whether Pete Knighton can defend his full Jacko car championship because it will be coming back on F1 2020. You'll be able to find more information on the Twitter page at Jacko car underscore. The first race will be a night race around the Bahrain International Circuit on 
July the 23rd, so pretty early into the new F1 2020 game. Thanks for Austin for joining me tonight. I must say it's been an absolute pleasure commentating over what was nine superb races. So unpredictable. Obviously, it was going to finish off with a sprinkling of rain. Thanks to all the drivers for taking part and thanks to you guys for watching. So a reminder, Jack of Car will be back 23rd of July with the Bahrain Grand Prix and we hope we can see you there. Good night.